This is Government Matters with Mimi Gerges. This is Government Matters, the show that delivers insights on federal government programs, people, and operations. I'm Mimi Gerges. The U.S. Fire Administration is a component of FEMA. They're launching a national strategy to combat an increase in deadly fires. Lori Moore Merrill is U.S. Fire Administrator. Lori, welcome to the program. Thank you so much. So you write something that was shocking to me. Quote, in this country, your chances of dying in a fire today are higher than 40 years ago. Why is that? Today we have building materials that are far less resistant to fire than years ago. We have a lot of lightweight construction. We have even the contents in our home or more plastics, more foam. These things burn much more quickly. That's why we say fire is fast. So it's important that we have escape plans because as you noted, we are less likely to escape fire today because it is so fast. So we need to know our plan to get out and your chances of dying, consequently, are much higher than they were in any time in history. So, so why now do we have less time to safely exit a, a burning building than we did before? What's, what's behind that? It is the speed of fire and the progression of fire, how quickly it moves because the contents are um, so flammable. We also have a lot of building, particularly in public housing, a lot of buildings that are not equipped with sprinkler systems, for example, automatic fire suppression systems. We also have uh, in public housing, a good bit of stock that was built prior to the 1992 Fire Safety Act. And so we have over a half million, HUD tells us, many of those have not been retrofitted. And so after 1992, most of our public housing, uh, well, all of it, it was mandated to have sprinkler systems and hardware smoke alarms. So we have this building stock that still is not alarmed appropriately. It doesn't have automatic suppression. And so moving quickly and having an escape plan um, is the best way to go. We have other safety features that must be built in, self-closing doors, for example, and having uh, these hardwired or tamper-proof uh, smoke alarms that are installed. Well, you, you mentioned um, public housing because fire deaths injuries, displacement disproportionately affect communities of color and disadvantaged communities. What's behind that and what are you doing about that? So in the country in 2022, we had 1.2 million structure fires across the nation, not to mention the 66,000 wildfires that burned and 2,500, uh, nearly 2,500 fire deaths, including 276 children and 96 firefighters. Disproportionately, almost two thirds of those were in poor communities and affected people of color. And we're just talking about the fire deaths. This doesn't even talk about the toll on people who were injured or lost everything. And so we are looking into the inequities because some people would even say it's a social injustice of sorts, right? That we have to pay attention to the disproportionate impact on these communities. There's also a firefighter shortage. Um, what's causing that? Obviously, it's a very dangerous job, but what's, what's going on there? And, and again, what are you gonna do about that? So we have a national strategy where the fire service has come together. Um, all of the heads of their nation's fire organizations, for everything from management to labor, to our volunteer cadre, to uh, NFPA, for example, all of our research agencies, we are standing together for the first time in history. They are working with the U.S. Fire Administrator to say we have to be as one because we do have this shortage. We know that we have to do better in recruitment. We're looking at part of that coming together is creating a national strategy. One of the national strategy goals is to formulate a national apprenticeship program. Look at models that have already been developed over in the Department of Labor, for example. Can we replicate that on the fire side? Because if we do not, in three, five, seven years, we're going to have a vast shortage of firefighters in this country while we are looking at increasing incident of fire. And the last thing we want is there's not enough fire firefighters to respond to your fire when your house is on fire. Well, firefighters are also at a higher risk for some cancers. Uh, they're exposed to high amounts of PFAS, chemicals. What's being done to help them? So you're exactly right. The firefighter death rate um, from cancer is very high. In fact, 75% of firefighters who die last year, 75% of them were from cancer the exposures to the products of combustion that they um, encounter. I mentioned foams, I mentioned plastics, all of these things as they burn, put off carcinogenic chemicals, not the least of which, as you said, PFAS. Um, 
we have to pay attention to getting that out of our living environment because it's affecting everyone, not just firefighters, but because they are uh, experiencing it firsthand on their gear and in fact in their gear. And so we're working very hard right now with our other government partners like NIOSH, for example, to look at how do we develop, and of course the industry, how do you develop fabrics to make the garments that do not contain PFAS. And so we're working very hard to address that and also in our fire suppressant foam, uh, AFFF we call it, that also contains PFAS. So both of these have to be addressed going forward. Firefighters also have higher risk of mental health issues, including PTSD. Are there um, programs that you're running that would help them? So that is, uh, the programs themselves are going to be more uh, outside in the industry. And yes, there are programs. Um, the IAFF has programs. Our National Fallen Firefighter Foundation also developing a lot of materials and others. What we are addressing is the PTS level that matches that of their military. Firefighters, uh, we talk a lot about things they can't unsee. I told you about the fire deaths and I told you how many children. Imagine that memory of pulling a child uh, who's been burned, who's died in a fire, right? You don't forget that. You don't unsee those things. And so they carry this with them throughout a career. And that's just the least of which uh, of the things that they see. And so we have to address this because our suicide rates are continuing to escalate. And very quickly, I mean, you mentioned before, there's lots of homes and buildings that don't have fire alarms. Is there something the federal government can do about mandating that? That's a great, great question. Uh, we have a couple of laws that have recently been passed. One uh, based on the Pennsylvania fire just a year ago where 12 people lost their lives, nine of them children. In that home there were smoke alarms that had either been disabled um, or non-existent, right? So three out of five fires in this country have smoke alarms that are either not working or they're absent. We have a new law that says if in public housing particularly, if you do not have hardware smoke alarms, then you must now install uh, either hardwire or tamper-proof smoke alarms so All that right. this no longer happens. Lori, thanks so much for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.